I wasted almost four months of my life, day in and day out, some days from the moment I woke up to the moment I went to sleep, on trying to build a SaaS product, indie hack, trying to build a business with code and build a piece of software that I could sell to people. And it ended up going nowhere. And I kind of want to talk a little bit about that. Maybe just share some of my trials and tribulations of going the indie hacker route and spending a bunch of time coding something that ended up getting no users and ended up going absolutely nowhere and felt like kind of a big waste of time. It's funny because my co-founder that I kind of started building this with might see this video and there's no resentment towards him whatsoever but I am going to mention kind of like how that all came about and how I started building this thing and decided to build this thing and like you know some of the ways that I went wrong in doing it and when I when I mention it I, I don't want it to seem like I'm trying to throw anybody under the bus because I think that most of it failed because of me honestly but Let's just get started, right? Sometime last year, I was going full-time YouTube and I decided to start coding some stuff and trying to build my SaaS idea, my big, my big escape the rat race, hopefully make 10K a month with this and not have to work a job anymore idea. And I quickly found that it was very hard to come up with an idea like that. I started building one thing that was for traveling families that was my wife's idea and that was more of a side project, little get started, get my, my feet wet with building out something and get familiar with the stack that I was just getting started with and get familiar with like trying to build something on my own. I knew that it wasn't going to be anything serious. So that's not the one I'm talking about. But then shortly after that, once I had decided like, I really got to figure out something to build just out of the blue, I talked to an old friend of mine who's a lawyer and they deal with immigration law and I'm telling them, hey, yeah, I'm like traveling in Asia and I'm trying to, you know, make money off of YouTube full time. And I'm trying to think of like things that I can build that, you know, maybe can make me some money if I'm able to sell it to a few people and, you know, eventually build a business off of that. And I asked them, I was just like, do you have anything that you do every day that you feel like can be automated or made a lot easier if somebody that knew how to code can build something for you. And they had a great idea. Really, I felt like it was a really, really good idea. I may have jumped the gun a little bit before thinking about like what all that work would entail. Also thinking about like what it would be like to partner with someone, especially like a non-technical co-founder because my role would be the tech guy who builds out all the stuff and then they would market it, which they, they did try to do that a bit and they started to, but the problem was that I didn't realize the magnitude of the task that I was trying to take on. At a high level, it seemed like something fairly simple. It, you know, to just give you a gist of what it was, is dealing with immigration law, they take in a lot of client intake data, and then the immigration lawyer takes those forms, either from, you know, actual data entry forms that are digital or paper forms, and then they take that information, and then they fill out a bunch of different forms for whatever process th their client is going through in immigration. And these forms are from the United States government, and it's a lot of manual work that lawyers have to do or paralegals have to do where they fill in all of this data and then, you know, send off the forms to the government to get approved and whatnot. When we talked about it, I was just like, that actually sounds like exactly what computers are meant for, right? Like you take in data and then you, you, you make it a lot easier and you take a lot of the, the human work out of it. Man, I just didn't realize how much work that was actually going to be. Being a developer and just wanting to get my you know, hands dirty right away, I just started coding. I was just like, you know what? This at a high level sounds easy. I'm gonna start building it. And I did. <laughs> and I built and built and built. And I wanted to get the idea of the prototype out. And that idea was you got a form that a client fills out with all of their personal information. And then we take a PDF from the government website and we take that information and we map it into the PDF forms and then you just press a button and boom, all of the client's info that they filled out is now in that PDF form and you could just print it and send it off. And in theory, that sounds pretty easy, but it was a lot more work. And then I started to 
try to like optimize and over engineer things. I wouldn't say over engineer, but I definitely started thinking about a lot of edge cases. And I started thinking about like all the little details and things that should make this perfect. And I started over engineering it. I, 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 instead of just having a simple form, I was trying to capture every bit of information that I can capture rather than just capturing some simple details and then mapping that data. Another thing too is that I really, really had no idea how much work it was gonna be to take a PDF form that I have no control over, which are also encrypted, and trying to take in data from my application and inject it into all the PDF fields. And at a high level, it's pretty simple. You just kind of get the PDF values and you, you know, map your data into those fields, but it was tedious and these forms were huge. And maybe I should have just outsourced this, but I was trying to be cheap about it. And I probably could have got like some junior developer to do this part because it wasn't hard work. Once you figured out how the mapping worked and I had it pretty well set up to where it was, if, if you saw the few examples, it was pretty easy to figure it out. But setting that up was so much work because the PDF forms suck. And a lot of the fields were broken up like a phone number Right? It's not one field for all 10 digits. It's 10 little boxes for each number. So then I have to like map each value into each box. I mean, we're talking about hundreds of values and data that need to get put into every single field and mapping them from my app to that. It was just, it was a mess. And it was like that for a lot of different things. If you've ever filled out a government form, Oh, what a nightmare that was. It was so much work. So then towards like the, the second and third form, I, I could barely get myself to want to do this. And I really underestimated how much work it was going to be. So then I committed to like, let me try to get this in a good enough spot to where we can actually just do one form. And that one form took me a while. And this is with the help of chat GPT or Claude. And this was with like still trying to shoot for MVP. And I, I got it working, right? After a few weeks or a month of like hacking away and setting up a, a good interface to be able to capture the client data and then mapping it to the first form, I got stuff working and then it was like, all right, well, what does MVP look like? And at this point I'm thinking, okay, we can't just do one form, right? Like that's not gonna be very helpful. So we gotta at least get, you know, three, four, maybe five of the most popular or most used forms by immigration lawyers working here. And at this point, my co-founder friend of mine, he's got a few like WhatsApp groups that he knows and he's got a few connections that he's kind of telling about and we start building an email list. And I think we ended up getting like 20 or so people in that early phase on the email list. And I'm still trying to like ship code. And I'm still trying to get this in a good spot. And I start realizing like, man, I'm dealing with a lot of personal information here, right? We're talking, you know, travel documents. We're talking potential social security numbers. We're talking addresses, phone numbers, you know, a lot of personal details. And in the past, I've worked for government websites. I understand like how important personal details are. And I start thinking like, I gotta encrypt this stuff. I gotta make sure that I'm not storing, you know, things like social security and birth dates and, and really important numbers and values into my database in plain text. So then I go down this rabbit hole of refactoring all of my stuff to add encryption and then figuring out like, you know, reading the encrypted values and being able to kind of display them to the user and making sure that they're saving and then doing a lot of research on how to properly and securely set up a database and a server and making sure that like this doesn't become a problem because if I get hacked and I've got a bunch of personal information on this website, like that's a big liability and I'm building a website for lawyers. And if anybody's going to sue you, it's going to be a bunch of lawyers. So I go down that route and I end up building it. Like after a few months, I get the five forms going and I burn out. Our email list wasn't growing because we didn't really have much more to offer besides like, Hey, we're building this thing. And I built a landing page. I built I built a full blown application. Like you hear indie hackers talk about build something quick, get it done in a week. 
many of these guys aren't building real applications. Like they're not, they're building a little feature and they package it up like it's an application and it's not. Like I built a full blown client management system, form populating PDF system with encryption and multi-user roles and permissions. And I, I built out, uh, it was basically like a multi-tenant uh, application as well. And, and you had like different teams could log in because you had to figure out like how to get that working. And yeah, another thing I built, again, it goes back to like over-engineering it, was that I had to figure out how do lawyers or paralegals invite other lawyers to their teams and like how does that get structured and how do you set up those permissions and then how does a lawyer invite a client to fill out a form right like it started to get very complicated and and a big mistake was that I didn't try to build something simple I tried to build something massive and I eventually burnt out because by the end of it I didn't even want to get the the few forms done because I was just I was toast I was at the point where I was just like I, I don't want to do this anymore and you know, my, my buddy is hitting me up and he's like, Hey, you know, how's it going? Where's it going? Is, is, are, are we getting to a point where we can launch this? He's like, I want to set up a webinar. I want to like talk to some people. I want to like show people what you've built because I built something pretty big and pretty cool. And, and then I like decided to make a video. Like I, I recorded a video of a walkthrough of how to like set up everything, right? Because it was complicated and it felt like it needed some guidance because you had to know how to set up your team. You had to know how to invite members. You know, I added two factor authentication. I added, I built so much and then it went nowhere because I kind of burnt out. And then I, I got in my own head of like, oh, man, I don't know. Like this sounds like a great idea, but at the same time, I just like, I, I don't know if we should try to market this. I worry that if anything goes wrong and we're dealing with, immigration law and, and filling out those legal forms and, and not even knowing if I was allowed to do that. And I kind of just, I feel bad because I kind of ghosted my friend and we still kind of chat a little bit and he's kind of brought it up like, Hey man, we should really talk about that. Like, like what's going on? You know, <laughs> what are you doing? You ready to, to launch that yet? And it felt like I wasted three months of my life. No fault to him at all. Um, uh, I also felt that it kind of has led me into having like a bad taste in my mouth for indie hacking and not knowing or wanting to build something else or not knowing what to build next or not really wanting to because I felt like I put so much time and effort into that thing. Um, which ended up being a great side project um, and looks good on my resume and maybe it helped me get this most recent job. But I, I've i never worked on something for so long and so hard and not seen any anything come from it. And maybe I should just launch it. Like Maybe I should you know, talk to my buddy and see what he thinks because it does seem like a good idea. And I, I, I saw that that email gr list grew and people were interested in it, but then I, I got cold feet and I failed to launch. It's not like an old Matthew McConaughey movie. I think my wife really used to like that movie. I don't even know why that came to mind, but um, that's exactly what happened. And I felt like I wasted so much time and like three months of my life and I have nothing to show for it but a GitHub project, which I just recently, I think I, think I destroyed the server for the website. Uh, obviously, I still have all the code and I still have the database uh, backed up and all of that. But I, I took it down because I was just like, why am I paying for hosting? It's not being used. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I just did that with a few of my side projects because I'm paying like an extra hundred bucks to host stuff on Laravel Forge and uh, DigitalOcean for my backups and my object storage, uh, you know, subscription and all that stuff, which just feels like junk. But I, I wanted to share this just because I know that a lot of people probably go through this, especially developers. And I feel like I listened to so many podcasts and books and videos about like how to do this the right way. And I still made all the mistakes that developers make. <laughs> I, I focused too much on building and I didn't market. I, you know, focused 
on trying to optimize and make things perfect and over engineered things rather than just launching quickly and getting an MVP out because I was worried like, what if I get a few users and it sucks and I, I then ended up just not doing anything and it became a ghost you know, repo in my GitHub. Maybe, maybe I should do something with it. it. This video actually is making me think of like, well, maybe I should, maybe I should touch it. I don't even know what that code looks like anymore because it feels like it was so long ago. But yeah, I mean, you know, that was my experience really giving it a go with being an indie hacker and just failing miserably. And I still want to build some other things. I still like jot down some ideas every now and then because I'm like, oh, that would be a, a cool thing to build. And then I just, I, I kind of lost motivation for wanting to build anything of my own. And now that I'm working as a developer, I'm kind of coding all day long for a job, which is making me money, way more money than I made with that SaaS product. Um, and I don't have as much um, desire to then uh, spend my free time coding because I'm already kind of doing that. And yeah, so that was, that was it. I just wanted to make a video talking about that because I feel that yeah, I wanted to get it off my chest and just, you know, share that with anyone who might be interested. All right. With all that said, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.